Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and today I'm going to be sharing a fairly brief work with you, The Andante Rondo Angarese by Carl Maria von Weber, who lived from 1786 to 1826. I first presented this talk as part of a series of pre-concert lectures in 2017 with the unifying theme of father-son relationships and the overriding maleness of the music world. Born in 1786, the next generation after Mozart was Karl Maria von Weber. In an important connection, his life and career were intentionally modeled on Mozart's young success. Karl's father, Franz Anton, intentionally followed the example of Leopold Mozart in attempting to create a new young sensation, his talented son. He had a particularly intimate knowledge of this career path because they were related by marriage. Mozart's wife, Constanze Weber, was Karl's cousin, about 15 years older than he. The extended Weber family were all working musicians, as many of you will know, Mozart first had a crush on Constanza's eldest sister, who was a known accomplished soprano. Franz Anton started his career as a military officer in the service of the Duchy of Holstein. As a violinist and composer, he later held a number of musical directorships, and then in 1787 he went on to Hamburg, where he tried and failed at running a theatrical company. Just as Beethoven had later added Van, V-A-N, to his name to add a touch of nobility, Van Beethoven, Karl's father Franz Anton had done the same thing. The Von Weber name began with Franz. Both the Von and the theatrical company demonstrate his ambition and a desire for more autonomy. If the branch of the family with Leopold Mozart had the mark of approval of continued service to nobility and the social status that went with it, the Webers had the entrepreneurial drive, dramatic flair, and the gusto to make things happen. We can see why young Mozart found this family attractive. Karl's mother died of tuberculosis when he was 12. She was Franz's second wife, a young bride, and not particularly healthy, and Karl himself was born sickly. He was born with a congenital hip disease, which prevented him from walking until he was four, and he had a noticeable limp all of his life. It may have been odd to pin hopes of a stellar career on this child, but Franz was determined to make the family famous. Franz put a lot of effort into Karl's musical education and sought out the teachers of Mozart. In Salzburg, the young Weber was taught by one of Mozart's teachers, Michael Haydn, the younger brother of Joseph Haydn. Karl's first work was published there and received warm reviews. Karl was not the infant phenomenon that Mozart had been, but he also was no slouch. By 18, young Karl already had a conducting post with the Breslau Orchestra. They objected to his youth, and they especially disliked his ideas of actually rehearsing. Musicians in this day preferred to wing it. Meanwhile, Karl's father had also made sure that Karl knew the publishing business so that he could print, publish, and profit directly from his own compositions. Part of Karl's musical training and recognition had been as a child chorister, then as an adult singer-soloist. But in the printing business, Karl had accidentally put a glass of wine down near a glass of nitric acid used in printing. He drank from the wrong glass, and the accident first almost killed him. Then when he recovered, his singing voice was permanently ruined. So here, at the height of a young singing career, we have a limp, a damaged voice, and yet his musical career continues. 
Given these realities, in some respects, this success could be viewed as even more phenomenal than Mozart's. The injury and the recovery period precipitated his loss of the conducting position at Breslau, and this was followed by more trouble. By this time, Father Franz was an alcoholic living off of his son. Karl was tried for theft. Karl's court sentence was to leave town and not return. That punishment shows that there had been a broader understanding that Karl was not really the guilty party, but he had taken the blame for his father. Similarly, Karl was also chastened by the bad example of his father, and when they left Breslau, he returned with renewed seriousness to study with another teacher of Mozart's, the great Abbe Vogler. Ironically, after his father's failed attempt at running a theater, Karl found his real voice as the musical director of a theater when he began to write operas that were immensely popular. Karl is credited with achieving something Mozart had talked about but had not achieved himself. Karl Maria von Weber is known for creating a form and style of opera that was uniquely German and beginning to incorporate German folk music idioms into these German operas. This was the springboard that Wagner later built from. Today we're going to hear one of von Weber's works that features the bassoon. Works featuring bassoon were not new. Vivaldi in the late 1600s wrote a huge group of concertos for the bassoon and other works considered foundational to bassoon repertoire. Von Weber's two major works featuring bassoon also remain a regular part of the repertoire, standing side by side with Mozart's earlier Concerto for Bassoon from 1774. Weber wrote his own bassoon concerto in 1809, and it was such a success that Weber composed this work, the, the second of the bassoon works, in 1813. His Andante and Hungarian Rondo. This work also capitalizes on and synthesizes many of von Weber's musical ideas. So we get to hear an example that represents him very well. Enjoy. <laughs> 